This episode of Fine Scale Modelers New Product Rundown features Tacom's M46, Kitty Hawk's Black Hawk, several new books, and Zvezda's T34. New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modelers Emmy nominated twice monthly show that gives you a look inside the latest kits books, tools, and more. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We have a packed show for you. Wait a minute. Did you just say we were nominated for an Emmy? Yep. Were we? Nope, but the nominating committee doesn't know that. Fair enough. As I was saying, we have a pack show for you, starting with Tacom's 135th scale M46. To improve the M26, a new engine and transmission were added. And the tanks were heavily used during the Korean War. The lower hull has braces molded inside to bolster the sides. The exterior features sharp inspection panels, casting marks, weld seams, and suspension attachments. The suspension comprises road wheel arms, shock absorbers, return rollers, road wheels, and drive sprockets. The tracks are Lincoln length. Two styles of track are provided, T80E1 steel with narrow chevrons, and T84E1 rubber block links with wider chevrons. Jigs help with track assembly and align the road wheel arms. The hull's upper plate shows deeply molded engine vents, cast marks, and rough cast texture on the glasses plate. Separate fenders have thin edges, as do the side skirts. Hatches for the driver and gunner have detail inside. There's no interior for the compartments. Toolboxes, more toolboxes, all with sharp details, as well as exhausts, and their covers populate the fenders. At the front is a frame for finely molded tools. Light guards are nicely fine. The turrets lower and upper sections show nice rough cast texture. Optional main guns are provided, a single piece barrel that fits into a mantlet with molded cast texture, and a two part gun with a dust cover molded at the base. It fits into a multi part fabric look mantlet. Both guns use the same two part muzzle brake. Other turret features include separate hatches, a 50 cal machine gun, spare track links, and an optional spotlight. The clear parts provide the spotlights, lenses, and periscopes for the hatches. Decals and color diagrams show nine marking options for Korean War patents including several with variations on the Tiger faces applied to some Army tanks, as well as Marine M46s. There's even one in winter camo. This looks like a great option for anyone wanting to build a Korean War tank. Here's Kitty Hawk's 135th scale MH60. This is the modified variant of the Black Hawk used by the U.S. Army's 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment. The body is molded in two full-length halves, including the tail boom. Surface detail includes recessed panel lines and rivets, and raised hinges, handles, and reinforcing strips. The detailed interior consists of a floor with molded fixtures and tie-downs, ceiling, instrument panel, and center console, all with molded dials and controls, pilot seats, cyclic, and collective controls, and optional troop seats for the back. The pilots and troop doors are separate. Ammunition boxes are provided if you choose to install M230 chain guns on the optional stub pylons. The pylons and the included rocket pods and Hellfire missiles seem more appropriate for the direct action penetrator version of the MH-60L. I believe all of the aircraft represented in the decals are the non-DAP version. Correct for this version are the M134 miniguns mounted in the spaces behind the cockpit. The weapons include separate parts for the spent cartridge chutes and photo etch brass ammo feeds. The frets also provide seat belts, tie downs, vents, panels, and more. On top, under several panels, are a pair of engines mounted inside a frame with detailed exhausts, separate covers, and intakes. Four rotor blades with molded droop attached to the multi-part rotor head on a large shaft that fits into the reduction gearbox. Other features include separate nose with radon, nicely molded tailplanes, solid landing gear, tail rotor, countermeasures units, and plenty of antennas. Separately boxed, the clear parts include all of the windows and lights. Decals provide markings for four MH-60Ls involved in the October 1993 raid in Somalia made famous in the book and movie Black Hawk Down. This release includes seven resin figures, two pilots, two gunners, and three special forces operators. Two kneeling, and the other appears to be holding a rope. That's a lot of kit with good detail. Be prepared to make some room on your bench and your shelves if you want to properly display it. Before we get to our final kit, we thought we'd look at a few books that caught our eyes. First up, from Detail and Scale, a stalwart in modeling references, here's a monograph on the F-8 and RF-8 Crusader. With color photos and illustrations throughout, this book traces the history of the carrier-based fighter from design and development through Vietnam deployments and foreign operations. 
Modelers will appreciate the detailed walk-around images and the kit roundup and evaluations that finish the 106-page volume. Great reference for fans of the MIG Master. In a similar vein, and timely with the recent 148 scale kit from Airfix, here's Hawker Hunter in British service from Pin and Sword's Flightcraft series, also aimed at modelers. This 96-page softcover is filled with photos and color profiles to show the Hunter from development to deployment and full operations. There are a few detailed photos of cockpits, a discussion of camouflage and markings, and a gallery of models. There's plenty to inspire you to build that Hunter. Speaking of inspiration, check out the hundreds of photos in Images of War M7 Priest by David Doyle. Starting with prototype photos, it follows the development of the self-propelled gun into the field. The photos provide lots of information about stowage, weathering, and camouflage. If British jet fighters are more your thing, check out Images of War, the English Electric Lightning. It's 114 pages of lightnings flying and undergoing maintenance in British and foreign service. Finally, from Specialty Press, here's a beautiful hardcover book that will appeal to civil fans, America's Round Engine Airliners. In addition to looking at some of the most famous airliners of the 20th century, including the DC-3, Stratocruiser, and Constellation, the book looks at the evolution of the radial engines that powered that progress. It's 216 pages of pure airliner joy, if you're into that type of thing. That wraps up this roundup of reading material. Time to make some room on the shelves. Finally, here's Vesta's new tool, 135th scale T3476, model 1943. Now, this isn't the manufacturer's first foray into this Russian icon, but this one shows all the hallmarks of its most modern tooling and techniques. It shares a few parts with the T3485s Vesta released last year, including the Lincoln length tracks, as well as the hull sides, road wheel arms, and springs of the Christie suspension, idlers, exhausts, tools, and more. The road wheels are new and represent the early dish style with good hub, bolt, and tire detail. Here are the drive sprockets. In addition to the aforementioned sides, the hull builds from a belly with molded hatches and weld seams, lower, and upper rear plates. The latter has sharp hinge, hatch, and bolt detail. The upper hull is a single piece and includes the side and rear fenders, upper engine vents, and the glasses plate. The front fenders are separate, as are the side grills for the engine deck. The large screened hatch on the rear is separate with vinyl mesh for the screen. Other hull features include fine grab handles, driver's hatch, stowage, auxiliary fuel tanks, bow machine gun, and tow cables. The turret comprises upper and lower sections with separate hatches, sight, and ventilator cover. The main gun is a one-piece barrel with separate open muzzle that fits into a multi-part reciprocator cover that fits into a nicely molded mantlet. Clear parts supply headlight lenses, periscopes, and vision blocks. There aren't many markings. The small decal sheet provides slogans for the turret of two vehicles, one overall green, the other in winter white. I continue to be impressed by Zvezda, which is producing some very nice straightforward kits that produce good looking models. This one appears to be no exception. Look for reviews of it along with the M48 and Blackhawk in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the May issue, our D-Day special, on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. You're a place to see more kit reviews, club and event listings, uh, how-to stories and videos, and of course the ever popular FSM forum. It's a friendly place to hang out with your fellow modelers, show off your work, and ask questions. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I had a little accident, nothing too serious. Books, tools, and more. What, who are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> See, even I have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not be named. <laughs> Welcome to New Product Rundown. Okay, and go. <laughs>